A number of parents and community members have expressed concern about the potential harmful effects from the Wi-Fi or wireless internet at the Callis School. If you weren't aware of it, Wi-Fi emits the same kind of microwave radiation as cell phones. The difference is that with a cell phone, the radiation exposure is limited to the time that the phone is in use, whereas with Wi-Fi, the radiation is continuously emitted. Many have considered cell phones as potentially harmful, as we've been hearing reports in the news of possible increased cancer risks. But Wi-Fi? How much radiation does it even put off? Well, in this video, we're going to actually take a look and measure how much there is at the Callis School and how much the children would be exposed to every day. A growing body of scientific research indicates that the radiation emitted from cell phones and other wireless devices creates adverse biological effects. There are literally thousands of studies that show such effects as permanent DNA damage, increased risk of cancer, damage to the reproductive system, heart and circulatory issues, weakening of the blood-brain barrier, changes to melatonin levels, thyroid disruption, neurological and behavioral problems, decreased cognitive function, which could impair learning, and many other neurodegenerative diseases. You might be thinking at this point that this is sounding alarmist and that there's no way that there really are hundreds or thousands of published studies that show harmful effects. Because if there were, then this technology wouldn't even be out there. Well, if you look back at the history, when this technology first came out, it was actually never even safety tested. The FCC gave the telecommunications industry a variance and exempted cellular phones from regulatory testing altogether. This was because the equipment was considered low power and the scientific understanding at the time was that it didn't have enough power to cause the heating of tissue necessary to cause damage. Since then, many studies have demonstrated harmful effects at power levels well below those which would create heating, but so far this understanding has not influenced the safety standards in the United States or Canada. These standards were created by the FCC. The FCC is a regulatory agency charged with regulating airwaves, but they are not a public health agency and never have been. The FDA admits that they don't evaluate the safety of wireless radiation emitting devices. The EPA has no program in place to address the safety of wireless communications. This leaves us with no agency at the federal level that is engaged in any activity to ensure public safety when it comes to wireless devices such as Wi-Fi. Another important consideration is that this technology is part of a trillion dollar industry that clearly has the ability to influence science as well as politics. Scientists who have studied wireless devices and have reported harmful effects have had their funding removed and their reputations damaged. Dr. George Carlo, the director of the first major cellular phone safety study, was threatened, physically attacked, and his house mysteriously burnt down shortly after he went public with the message that cellular phones were genotoxic, meaning permanently damaged DNA. There's a saying that I think applies here, and it's follow the money. If you do this and you look at who's funding the research, you can see that the industry-funded research, for the most part, shows no effects, whereas the non-industry-funded research does show effects. Well, what happens if we add them together? Well, we get maybe. There could be some effects. But we need more research. And isn't that exactly what we keep hearing? Another thing that I hear is that we don't have conclusive evidence. Well, I don't know how we're going to get conclusive evidence if the industry itself is funding the research. Here's a question. If it were your children and their health depended on it, who would you listen to? Would you listen to the industry-funded research? Would you really expect this industry to be self-regulating? 
although I'm not saying that these industries or their level of accountability are the same, it might be helpful to take a look back at how the tobacco industry handled a similar situation. Have they been proved to be safe, Mr. Coleman? I believe they have not been proved to be unsafe because when, as and if, any ingredient in cigarette smoke is identified as being injurious to human health, we are confident that we can eliminate that ingredient. And I concluded from that report it's true. that the babies born from women who smoke are smaller, but they're just as healthy as the babies born from women who do not smoke. What about the higher and rate some women would prefer having smaller babies. How about Shocking, isn't it? Well, let's get back to the Wi-Fi health issue and preparing to test for microwave radiation in the school. As some general background, Let's take a quick look at the electromagnetic spectrum so that you can understand what it is that we're going to be testing for. There's quite a range of different types of frequencies that are out there in the world. And in this diagram, those that are furthest to the left are the lowest frequencies. For example, the Earth emits its own frequency. It's actually at 8 hertz, or 8 cycles per second. AC power, which is electricity, it produces a frequency of 60 hertz or 60 cycles per second. And these other different technologies produce faster and faster frequencies. Cell phones, uh, they produce a frequency around 2 gigahertz or 2 billion cycles per second. Wi-Fi would be right next to it it's not pictured but it would be right next to it at 2.4 gigahertz or 2.4 billion cycles per second some people get confused between AC power testing and wireless testing because AC power can give off harmful magnetic fields as well for example high tension power lines or um, certain types of large appliances uh, actually have very sizable fields but for this study, we're just going to be looking at wireless devices, which are in this one particular portion of the microwave range. With all this said, let's get to the actual testing for microwave radiation. In order to give these school readings some context, let's first take some background measurements in our local environment. In this first clip, you can see that we're outside the Maple Corner Community Center and the meter is showing 12.7. In the second clip, you can see that we're at uh, Curtis Pond, and the meter is showing 14.0. Uh, here we are at the East Callis Post Office, and the meter is showing 11.1. .1. So what do these numbers mean? As a point of reference, here is a measurement taken out in the forest, away from all but the most distant sources of radiation. The meter shows 11.1. .1. When you compare the readings from this remote natural setting to the other readings that we took in town, you can see that there really isn't that much in terms of background radiation in our local environment. Now that we've done the background environmental testing, let's go over to the school. The Cala School's Wi-Fi system is set up with five routers placed in various locations in the building. There is Wi-Fi access throughout the school, with emphasis in certain areas such as the library, the community learning classroom, and the upper grades. All children in the school currently use Wi-Fi enabled laptops. Children in the lower grades share a set that is wheeled around on a cart, and children in the upper grades have their own for full-time use. Thanks to the help of the Director of Technology Services, we were able to set up one of the upper grade classrooms for our test. So here we are at the fifth and sixth grade classroom. The meter is showing 500. We're approaching the router, which is where it's going to be the highest. And as the number goes over 999, it's going to show a new digit there. It look uh, six point something. That means 6,000 right next to the router. Out in the middle of the room, it's around seven or 800. And as we approach the laptops, they themselves have a wireless transmitter in them because they need to be able to communicate with the router across the room. So it becomes a stronger signal right next to 
the the transmitter which is in the back of the screen here you can see close to the front of the laptop where your lap would be or where the student would be sitting the numbers are several thousand two to three thousand so here we have the classroom test results in the center of the room it was 800 millivolts per meter in the direct vicinity of the laptops it was around a thousand millivolts per meter and in front of the laptop it was 2857 millivolts per meter of course I knew that the numbers were going to be high but I had no idea that they were going to be that high to give you an idea of how high these are I went and I took test readings at a cell phone tower in the area and the readings show pretty much the same as what's in the classroom but nowhere near what the children would be exposed to if they were leaning over their Wi-Fi enabled laptops these laptops and the Wi-Fi network produce three times the microwave radiation of a cell phone tower most of us would never imagine that this would be the case because it doesn't make sense it was never explained to us before and we'd never even know about it if it weren't for a meter would you as a parent even for a second consider a cell phone tower on the school grounds how about one in the classroom well without even knowing it you consented to placing one in your child's lap what does this mean in terms of a health issue I don't even think we know at this point because this is such a new technology this is the first generation of humans ever to experience direct and constant microwave radiation what could the long-term health effects be if this does turn out to be harmful well a recent study of cell phones found that long-term users meaning those who had used one for over 10 years were found to have a much higher cancer rate what really stood out were the results for those who had started while young for these individuals the increased risk was over 500 percent children absorb more radiation than adults their bodies have a higher water content and this makes them more conductive to the radiation they are also more vulnerable because their skulls are thinner their brains are still growing their immune systems are still developing and their cells are still rapidly dividing when you think about how much radiation exposure this generation would get by being near these wireless devices all day long it's really staggering the cumulative results would greatly exceed anything that's been studied so far this amounts to a giant experiment that we are taking with something so precious as our children why would he even consider risking their health for something so frivolous and unnecessary fortunately there's a fairly easy solution which is to hardwire the computers hardwiring is safe in that it emits no microwave radiation the connection speed is much faster it's more reliable and the overall network would now be secure cables can be routed neatly and cleanly with wire protectors to prevent tripping over the cords the cost in many cases is negligible the only issue appears to be losing some of the convenience of being cord free convenience is not an acceptable reason to risk the health and safety of children please do your own research on this so that you can become well informed I've provided links below this video that will give you access to the studies and other information that you're going to need the best single source for the scientific research would be the bio initiative report if as a parent you decide that these risks are not worth taking and that our children's health and well-being is so precious that it should not be part of an experiment please let your school know beneath this video is also a link to a non-consent form that you can send to your school this will inform your school district of this public health issue and let them know that they need to make sure that they fulfill their moral and legal responsibility to providing a safe learning environment thank you